Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Steven Spielberg returns to the children's fantasy genre that he made his bones on with The BFG, a whimsical and delightful new film that dazzles at every turn. Although the narrative suffers from pacing problems, and it lacks the depth of, say, uh, E.T. or A.I., it is more than capable of holding your attention, and especially the attention of your kids, despite the fact that its story doesn't really add up to much. That's it for the capsule review. Let's get in depth. We'll start with the pedigree. Disney Studios presents a film by Steven Spielberg, who's working alongside his usual dream team, including cinematographer Janusz Kaminski and the legendary John Williams, doing some of his most thrilling work in years. An adaptation of a novel by Roald Dahl, writer of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and James and the Giant Peach. An adaptation, by the way, which was done by E.T. screenwriter Melissa Matheson. Just look at the people involved here. There's no way that this movie could possibly be bad. And it's not, but it's not perfect. And I want to start with the imperfections, which is a little out of the ordinary for me. There's just so much to love here, and we'll get to that in a minute. But first, the story. There are some major pacing problems in this story that wastes no time plunging us straight into the action as little orphan Sophie gets stolen right out of the window of her London orphanage by the titular big friendly giant and hauled off to giant country. Why did he take her there? What does he plan on doing with her? What is she going to eat? It's not really clear and character motivations, especially for actions that take the story into wild new directions, are the movie's biggest problem. Once Sophie is in giant country, the story stalls as we go from one beautiful set piece to another without anything new being set up that will pay off later or the plot advancing in any way. It's just a tour through a fascinating world that is wondrous to behold but in which not a whole lot of consequence happens. In a way, it's sort of reminiscent of some of the better, newer, more technically advanced rides at the Disney theme parks. It's comfortable, wondrous to behold, and in the end, you come out relaxed, entertained, and happy and with only the vaguest notion that you'd actually been told a story inside. Midway through the film's two-hour running time, the pace quickens up, and some things actually happen, even then with only the vaguest sort of provocation by the characters, but when events start unfolding that are so fun and so silly, you may not even care. I know your kids won't. So, nitpicking over, let's get to the good stuff. This is an amazing cinematic experience, from the accurate mocap effects that bring Mark Rylance's BFG to life, to the imaginative production design, to the gorgeous and whimsical John Williams score, the entirety of this film is fascinating to behold. This is what happens when you give one of cinema's greatest visionaries fertile ground for crafting an entire realm of fantasy. This film really supplies that element missing from so many fantastical CGI heavy fantasy stories these days, a sense of wonder. At all times, you will be in awe of what you are beholding, and that is to be cherished. Do you remember that slow period in the film I was talking about? Well, that section in particular contains so many indelible moments and visual delights. Sure, they don't advance the plot, but you do get to watch our characters catch dreams and then dispense them to hapless, sleeping adults and children using some sort of giant bugle horn. We get to watch as Sophie develops a great friendship with the BFG, and we meet the BFG's even larger brothers, all bluster and bullying, who, um, uh, well, there's no getting around it. They eat children, or at least they want to eat Sophie. We never see them eating any kids, but we get the impression that they must have done it before, at least once, you know, or, or, they'd, or they'd never have lived this long. But it just so turns out our boy, the BFG, is a vegetarian, and he loves people, and he particularly loves his little Sophie. And we love them both, and this film just charms the hell out of you, especially during a sequence where the BFG must reveal himself to the queen of all people, and by that point, the story is kicked into high gear and is moving zippily through a whimsical comedic sequence that culminates in what might be the longest and most protracted setup for a fart joke in cinematic history. No, I don't want to consult the archives on this one. And by then, the film is introducing new themes that were never set up previously, but that's okay. We love these characters so much that we don't care. The giant has his own gibberishical language similar to Alex from A Clockwork Orange, and we don't mind so much by the end. We're just propelled along by the great John Williams score, and we don't end up caring about the pacing issues. We're dazzled by the sights and the sounds and the heart of this film that to complain about the storytelling problems would seem a little disingenuous. I award the BFG a large bag of popcorn. I saw it in full IMAX 3D, and I enjoyed getting my eyeballs crammed full of giant 
jet-sized, colorful imagery, but I doubt that many will get the same experience as I did. The theater was virtually deserted. The BFG tells a slight, breezy story, but with a richness of detail that ignites the imagination. And it's the kind of film that kids will only discover on video years later and delight in repeatedly as they grow up. So hey, maybe do them a favor this weekend and take them to see it for the first time in the theater, because years from now, they may wish they had. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop, and click the icon right down there to visit our channel. You'll be able to view all of our other videos, and more importantly, while you're there, click subscribe, so you can keep up with all the latest videos, and so we can keep the lights on around here. Be sure to leave your comments below, and click the thumbs up if you like what you heard. In the meantime, thanks for watching, I'm the Colonel, and we be enjoying country now.